Welcome to this video on reducing fractions. So first of all, in order to understand what we are doing when we reduce fractions, we need to understand what are equivalent fractions. Put simply, equivalent fractions are fractions that have the same value or meaning, but different denominators. You might have actually done this in real life when you're cooking or baking. So let's suppose we're baking a cake. We need to measure out a half a cup of oil. But right now, our half cup measure is dirty and we're in a hurry, so we don't want to take time to go and wash the half cup measure. But we do have a clean quarter cup measure. So how can I use that quarter cup measure to get half a cup of oil? So what I can do is I can take a quarter cup and I can just do it twice. So a quarter cup plus a quarter cup, that gives me two fourths and if we reduce it, that becomes one-half. So what we find is that two-fourths and one-half are what are called equivalent fractions. Okay, so if I put two quarter cups into my cake of oil, or if I put one half a cup into my cake, either way I have put in there the same amount of oil. Let's keep going. So let's start with the fraction 2 over 4. So we were just looking the, at this in terms of baking. So now we're going to express it as a fraction, 2 over 4. So remember, the denominator of a fraction tells us how many equal sized parts our whole is split into. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 equal sized parts of our whole. Then the top number, or the numerator, tells us how many of those pieces we have. So in this case we have two out of a total possible of four regions. Okay, so how could I reduce two over four or how else could I express it? If we come over here and we look at this right hand picture, hopefully you can see visually it's exactly the same, right? But in this case we have only one shaded region out of a possible of two. So mathematically how do we get from two over four to one over two? And the simple answer is that I would divide both the top and the bottom number by 2. So 2 over 4 and 1 over 2 are mathematically equivalent, and hopefully you can see visually they are exactly the same as well. So if you think about it as pizza, right, if I t ate two of these slices from this pizza, it would exa be exactly the same as if I ate this whole bit, this half of the pizza. Again, assuming that they're the same size. Let's do another example. Okay, so this time we have two out of six. So let's think of this as a pizza that's been cu cut into six slices, right? And I've eaten two of those slices. Well, that's exactly the same as if I came over here to this pizza and I ate one out of the three slices that it was cut into. So two over six is equivalent to one over three. We can see that visually, mathematically, to get from one to the other, all I would have to do is to divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Here's another example. So let's say I have eaten 1, 2, 3, 4 slices out of this pizza that's been cut into 8 slices. So hopefully visually you can see that that's exactly the same as eating 2 out of the 4 slices and it's also exactly the same as eating 1 out of two slices. So all of these are equivalent fractions. Mathematically, how would I get from one to the other? Well, four divided by two is two, and eight divided by two is four. Likewise, two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. So all of these have been visual examples. Let's just make up some fraction examples that don't necessarily have a visual representation for whatever reason. So let's say I have 24 over 36, and I'm being ask, asked to reduce this, okay? So there's a few ways to think about this and to do this. Um, one thing is I can just go straight in and try to figure out the largest number that is divisible um, or that goes evenly into 24 and 36. So let's say I realize that 12 is in fact the largest number. So 24 divided by 12 is 2, 36 divided by 12 is 3. So this reduces to 2 thirds. Now if you're really good at your multiplication tables and you're really good at math, this should be pretty simple. But a lot of people aren't for whatever reason. It doesn't matter. Okay, so there's 
lots of ways to do this. We don't have to go straight from the beginning to the end. One thing I can always ask myself is, I always ask myself is, is the number divisible by two? Right, and that's really easy to know is because all it has to do is be an even number, which means that it ends in a zero, a two, a four, a six, an eight, right? So if any of those numbers, right, are at the end of my, uh, sorry, if any of those digits are at the end of my number, I know they are even. Okay, 24 and 36 are both even. So let's just say I start by dividing both of these by two. So 24 over two is 12, 36 over two is 18. So again, I notice that hmm, both of these are even numbers. So I would like to divide by two again. So 12 divided by two is six, 18 divided by two is nine. Now at this point, you might realize, hmm, six and nine are both divisible by three. So let's try to divide both things by three and then let's see what we get. So six divided by three is two, nine divided by three is three. Okay, so please understand that these are both equally valid approaches. Okay, again, if you are super good at your multiplication tables and factoring numbers, then please, by all means, you know, you can go in one or two steps straight to your answer. That is completely valid. Okay, if that's not you, if you never memorized your times tables, then please feel free and comfortable to take this other approach. It doesn't matter how long it takes you to get to the answer as long as you get there. Right? So let's do a few more examples to get more comfortable at this, um, at this process. Okay? So let's say I have 48 over 56. Okay? So I'm going to do the slow way this time. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say to myself, well, they're both even numbers. Right? That's the first thing I always, always look for. So 48 over 2 is 24. Okay? And then 56 over 2, well, what is that? That is, I believe... Uh, 28. Is that right? Okay. So now we have 24 over 28. So let's divide by 2 again and let's see what happens. So now I get 12 over 14. Okay. And then I can divide by 2 again. Right? 12 divided by 2 is 6 and 14 divided by 2 is 7. Hmm. Well, what if... What if this was a problem where they were asking me for the GCF or the greatest common factor? Um, you know, I didn't do this in a single step. So how can I know what my greatest common factor is, right, since I don't just have one? It's actually pretty simple to pull out the greatest common factor from this. All I do is I take each number that I divided by, so 2 times 2 times 2. Okay, and when I multiply all of those numbers together that I divided by, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, that's going to get me back to my greatest common factor. Okay, so this method is also um, useful and helpful to find the greatest common factor. Okay, all right, let's do another problem. Um, what if we have a negative number? Let's throw in negative 72 over, hmm, what's a good number? Um, how about negative 72 over 108? All right. So, again, you might know exactly what number goes into both of these evenly, or you might just realize, well, I think that they're both even. So let's just start dividing by 2. Divide by 2, divide by 2. Okay? So uh, 72 divided by 2, don't forget your negative sign, right? So um, that's going to give you negative 36, okay? And then this is going to give you 54, Let's keep going. We can divide by 2 again. We get negative 18 over, um, I believe that gives us 27. Okay. At this point, 27 is definitely an odd number. Okay. But you might notice that they're both divisible by 3. So this gives me negative 6 over 9. And now I'm out of room, so I'll bring it down here. Okay. Once again, I can divide by 3. And that gives me negative 2 over 3, or negative 2 thirds. Okay? So now let's build our GCF. What is our GCF? We just divided a bunch, right? Well, we, we divided by 2, and then we divided by 2 again, and then we divided by 3, and then we divided by 3 again. Okay? So 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 3 is 
36. So our greatest common factor in this problem is 36. So let's do one more example, um, just, just for practice. So let's say I have 62 over 70. Okay, so again, you might realize exactly um, immediately what the GCF is, or you might just start dividing by 2. So in this case, 62 divided by 2 is 31. 70 over 2 is 35. 31 is a prime number, meaning that it's only divisible by 1 in itself. So this, this time you just have to stop after one division. So our greatest uh, common factor here, you can see we only divided by 2 the one time. So our GCF would be 2. And it's as simple as that.